All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over Google Ads keyword match types. So I'm gonna go through the four different keyword match types that you need to know about, and I'm really only gonna be focusing on targeted search keywords. So I'm gonna do a separate video for negative keywords here. I'm only gonna be talking about when you're targeting search keywords in your search campaigns for Google Ads. So what I've done first is I've opened up one of my search campaigns here, and we're targeting a couple keywords here. So we have an exact match keyword right here, and this is a modified broad match keyword. So what I'd like to do first is go through the four different keyword match types and how you can use them, how they work, and then over here some different search queries that would actually trigger an advertisement based on the match type. So first I'm gonna start with broad match, but before I go through keyword match types, one thing you need to know about are close variants. So when it comes to close variants, so I pulled this from Google, you can see the source at the bottom. Uh, so this is a quote just from that page and it says, so that you don't miss out on potential customers, we may show your ads for close variations on broad match modifier, phrase match, and exact match keywords. Close variations of these match types can include misspellings, singular or plural forms, acronyms, abbreviations, accents, and stemmings, such as floor and flooring. And for exact match keywords, this includes queries with the same meaning. So basically what close variance is gonna do is expand the search queries that your targeted keyword will match to other things like misspellings, like plural forms of the word. And I'm gonna go through that a little bit more as I talk about the targeted keywords. But just a quick example here is we're looking at exact match keywords. So you could see dry dog food. So some of the different keywords that might match for dry dog food is obviously the exact match version of the keyword. Then we have one over here. So if someone misspells it and does DRI dog food, Google is gonna assume that when someone types in this, it's gonna mean that they're typing in this dry dog food. So it's still gonna match your targeted keyword. So that's just an example of close variance and it's gonna impact your modified broad match keywords, your phrase match keywords, and your exact match keywords. So even if you're targeting something like dry dog food, it might match for dry dog foods, dry dogs food. So just some different ideas uh, that your ads will show for. And close variants are an important thing that you need to keep in mind because if you're targeting some exact phrase and modified broad match keyword, you can't turn off close variants. You used to be able to, but now you can't. Google is gonna match them. It doesn't really impact your campaign negatively in my experience. It's just a way to expand your keywords a little bit. So you don't need to worry about adding plural forms of some of these exact match keywords because Google is gonna match them anyway. So if you have something like dry dog food, for example, you don't need to add misspellings. You don't need to add dry dog foods or anything like that because Google will match them automatically. So now what I'm gonna do is go through the four different keyword match types so you can understand how to use them and when ads will show for them. Now, before I get started with any of this, I never use broad match keywords. It's just something I never do. I think they're a little bit too broad. I think the problem with broad match keywords is they're gonna show for synonyms, related searches, uh, similar keywords. So if you're targeting a broad match keyword like dry dog food, you might have ads show for things like dry pet food, best dog food. It might even show for wet dog food. So it's really gonna be too broad in my experience. And when you're trying to optimize your ad campaigns for quality score, for ad rank, and to make sure that you're really serving targeted ads for each individual search query, I think broad match makes things a little bit too broad. So I have here ads might show for search queries that include the targeted keyword. So we have that up here, similar keywords. So something like dry pet food, synonyms, related searches, misspellings. So it's really gonna be a little bit too broad in my experience. I never use broad match keywords because you're gonna have synonyms show up. You're gonna have all sorts of different ads showing for keywords that you're not even targeting. And what's gonna end up happening is your campaign is gonna be impacted negatively because your ads are just showing for too many keywords and there's gonna be unrelated keywords that show up even when you're targeting something like dry dog food, you might get something like wet dog food. So then you're sending people to a landing page that has dry dog fo food on it. You have advertisements that are geared towards dry dog food. So you want everything to match and line up, especially when you're working with Google ads, because that's the best way to improve your quality score over time. Now, the better way instead of using broad match keywords is to use modified broad match keywords. So what this means I have here, ads will show when search query includes words with a plus sign modifier in the targeted keyword. So what that means is we have dry dog food with a plus sign in front of each word. So for this one, for modified broad match, if you look across, so now we have what ads will show for, for some of these different options here. So let's just say you have the plus sign in front of each individual word in your targeted keyword here. So this is a modified broad match keyword then ads will show for something like best dry dog food or 
dry food brands for dogs. So because we have dry here, we have dogs here, and we have food here, then it will show for this as well. Now, if you're doing something like dry dog food and you don't include the plus sign modifier in front of dog, then what you might match for is something like dry pet food because you have dry and food in there, which are the two words that you said you want to include when someone has that in their search query to target them with your advertisement. Now, the next one down here is dry, and then we have the plus sign modifier in front of dog and food. So it might match for something like best dog food. So you can see those two are included, but we don't have dry here. We have best. And then another example is just food brands for dogs. So that will match this as well because you have dog and food and then food and dogs here. So you really want to include them in front of every single word in your targeted keyword. So I use modified broad match keywords a lot. This is probably my favorite type of keyword matching to use um, because you're going to match a lot of different keyword types and you can use negative keywords, which we'll go over in a separate video to make sure that your ads aren't showing for unrelated searches. But something like dry dog food, I think if someone types in best dry dog, Dog food or dry food brands for dogs any of those types of keywords are going to be very relevant to dry dog food and it will also match the exact match version of that keyword as well so if I have dry dog food here it will show for something like dry dog food so it really matches for every type of related keyword in my experience so the next thing here is going to be phrase match keywords so it is exactly what it sounds like so anytime this phrase is in the search query then it will target that search query with your advertisements. So just some examples over here. So best dry dog food 2019. So since we have the phrase there, dry dog food, it will match. And then brands for dry dog food will match as well. Now, if you have a phrase dry dog food like this and someone does dry food brands for dogs, then it's not going to match because that phrase is not included in the search query. So it has to be something like best dry dog food. This exact phrase has to appear in this order. Otherwise, it's not going to match and your ad will not show for that individual search query. Now, exact match is really the easiest to understand. So you type an exact match keyword and it's going to match for any type of keyword that is exactly the same or close variance just like that. Now, the main thing to keep in mind is when you're targeting phrase match keywords, you're going to put quotes around those keywords. And when you're targeting exact match keywords, you're going to put brackets around those keywords. And then for modified broad match, you just include the plus sign in front of every word you want to make sure includes in the search query for your advertisements to show. So now I'm going to give you some quick examples. So we're going to open up Google ads here. So we have our farmhouse goal search campaign open and we're in our farmhouse shelves ad group. So you can see here we're targeting the exact match version of a keyword and the modified broad match version of a keyword. So if we take our data here and I come to the search terms report, you're going to be able to see some of the different search terms that have been matched based on our targeted keywords. So you can also see the match type. So you can see something like farmhouse shelving. So that's an example of a close variant. So we're not targeting the keyword shelving anywhere, but since they include shelving and shelves as the same keyword, then that's going to be an exact match for a close variant. So you don't necessarily need to include these in your campaign. But one thing you can do is come back to your targeted keywords and I can target something like farmhouse shelving. Now I've had a lot of questions recently about whether or not you should target exact match keywords altogether, because if you're using an automated bid strategy and you're using modified broad match keywords, then this keyword will match the same things that this matches as well. So it's an interesting question. It's something where you don't necessarily need to target an exact match keyword. But one thing that I like the reason why I like to do it is because it will separate out your statistics a little bit better. Um, you can see your click through rate, you can see your average CPC for this individual exact match keyword. And you can also optimize for quality score because any of the key keywords that you're targeting with the exact match version are generally going to be the most searched keywords. So you want to make sure that you have the highest possible quality score for this keyword. But it's an interesting test to run. So it's something that you can test on your own. Um, so maybe if you just pause the exact match version of the keyword, and this only works for automated bidding strategies. So I'm using automated bidding strategies for this campaign. If you're still using manual bidding strategies, I generally bid higher on exact match keywords. I bid. So the way I would look at it is I bid the highest on exact match keywords. I don't really target broad match keywords altogether, but I would bid the absolute lowest on them. I would bid the second highest on phrase match, the third highest on modified broad match. I don't generally target phrase match keywords all that often either. So usually I'll target exact match keywords and modified broad match keywords because I think that's going to give me the same exact reach and it's going to make sure that I'm targeting all the right keywords really for that campaign in that individual ad group. So staying in farmhouse shelves here, if I come over to search terms again, you can see all the different keywords and search queries that have matched, matched to my keywords. So something like farmhouse floating shelves. 
So this is a keyword that I could add as a keyword right to this ad group because it's very relevant and I wanna make sure that people are seeing my ads when they search something like farmhouse floating shelves. I could probably actually separate this out into a different ad group and make sure I'm sending people to the proper landing page. So that's kind of how I think about landing pages and ad groups is making sure if I have a landing page for something like this farmhouse floating shelves, then I can create a brand new ad group here to make sure that when people go on my website, they're seeing only farmhouse floating shelves because there's a lot of different types of farmhouse shelves. Now something like DIY. So if I'm trying to get someone to actually buy farmhouse shelves for me, I might want to add this as a negative keyword uh, so that's just another thing to keep in mind as well um, so we come back over here to our search que keywords and let's just say I want to add new search keywords to this campaign so first they're gonna pull up some related keywords over to the right hand side but just so you can see down here at the bottom it says match types help control which searches can trigger your ads so to add new keywords all you need to do is to go into your ad group and if I did something like this farmhouse shelves then that's just gonna be the broad match version of the keyword if I type in farmhouse shelves, then that's gonna be the modified broad match version of the keyword. If I type in farmhouse shelves like this with quotes around it, it's gonna be the phrase match version of the keyword. And then if I do it like this, farmhouse shelves, that will be the exact match version of the keyword. So just some different things to keep in mind. The way I think about keyword match types and how I should use them in an ad group is really related to my landing pages. So something like farmhouse bookshelf, I consider that completely different. So if someone's looking for a farmhouse bookshelf, I wanna make sure I'm sending them to a page that only has products similar to that. Something like farmhouse wall shelves, I think that's very similar. So I could actually include this right in my ad group. So I'll come over here, we'll do farmhouse wall shelves, include it over there. Now you wanna make sure you either add modifiers to it or quotes or brackets because I don't like to target broad match keywords. I don't really want to match with things that are a little bit too broad here. So what I'll do is I'll add this as a modified broad match keyword. We'll take farmhouse, wall, and shelves. And it's that simple. All you need to do is click on save. And now it's going to add that keyword to this ad group. And I'm going to start getting more data about when people type in farmhouse wall shelves. Now this keyword will match for this modified broad match keyword. So I don't necessarily need to add it but you can always add them, especially more popular keywords because it'll break out the clicks, impressions, click-through rate, and you can see more data about how those keywords are performing. Now, the other thing you can do is when you come into your search terms report, you can see which keywords are actually driving conversions for you here. So the exact match version of farmhouse shelves drove a conversion for us. You could see a good conversion rate. If you're seeing certain searches here that are driving up your cost and aren't driving conversions, then that's when you wanna add them as negative keywords. And then anything down here that you see that's really not related enough, you wanna add as a negative keyword as well. Or something like farmhouse shelves DIY, maybe I separate this out into its own ad group and make sure I'm sending people to a landing page that's about creating your own farmhouse shelves rather than a landing page where people can buy farmhouse shelves. So just some different options when it comes to keyword match types. Hopefully it all makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching our video today and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.